So here's TechLast's new tablet. It is the X89 Kindle. Now I think that's a bit of a play on the word Kindle because they advertise this one as being a dual boot ebook reader almost. So it's got a 7.5 inch Samsung screen with a very odd resolution because it's a 4x3 display. It's 1440 by 1080 and has 2 gigabytes of RAM, 32 gigabyte eMMC, and it's powered by last year's Atom Baytrail Z3735F. So that one can turbo up to 1.83. It's interesting they didn't go with the Cherry Trail. Maybe they're using up old stock. So I got this one here from Banggood.com, and I opted to get it just without the original packaging because there's a little bit of a saving there. If you pay, I think it's an extra 7 or 8 US you can get the original box. But it is well packaged up in there. So we have the usual tech last warranty card and all that stuff. That's all in Chinese. Here's the tablet. We have a, a micro USB to USB for charging and data in Android. This is a dual boot. And here's the OTG adapter, so that's going to convert from micro USB to full size USB so we can at least plug in uh, some hard drives and flash drives and whatnot. They've included a Euro to US adapter for the power supply and here is the power supply in a rather messy looking little box that has got a bit of damage to the front of it, it's been all ripped up. So that's the standard tech last charger there which outputs 2 amps and is rated at uh, 5 volts there. So let's have a look at the tablet. Okay so we see it has a Rather, well, the top and bottom bezels are quite large. They're a little bit larger than what I thought they would be looking at their photoshopped promotional images. And it's quite common for Tech Last, I've noticed they do tend to do that. They make the images of the screens look a little larger than they really are, and the bezels don't seem to come out in real life as good as they look in those photoshopped up images. And we see here that... Uh, Build is plastic, 100% plastic. There is no metal housing on the rear. I can see there the Kindo marking there, uh, CE for those that require that, and countries like uh, I think it's uh, the Germans need that. They want to see that customs. They have put the sticker on there. I don't know whether if that's official marking or not. Uh, the back here we have a two megapixel camera. You can see one tiny little loudspeaker here, and on the right, power on, volume up and down. Just along the top here are all the ports. So we have a microphone there, micro USB, and a micro HDMI. It's a USB there, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And finally, there is also a micro SD card slot, so we can at least expand on the 32 gigabytes of included internal storage. Of course, that is separated between two OSs. Windows 10 and Android 5.1 I think it is so we're not really going to have a lot of free space so let's get this thing powered up hopefully there is still some battery in battery life there we go T-pad and this is the typical tech last launcher there that is their dual boot launcher they have been using this now for some time so you can either disable the menu here we have Windows or Android, Android, so just move over into Android first. So here we are in Android. You can see already that they have a, a few bloat applications on there. Normally, you can uninstall these, and definitely there's actually a lot of bloat where on this. Most of it we should be able to get rid of. There is TechLast's over-the-air update system, and we also do have Play Store, of course. I think we should be able to get rid of most of it. Now they have gone with a stock ROM again which is good, they're, they're not using their own custom launcher. I think they have actually just ditched that recently and they're not just going with it at all. 
which is a good thing because if we've ever used the first models they used to have the first dual boots like the tech last x98 air they had the t-launch on it and it's quite heavy on resources takes up a lot of ram and can be a little bit laggy and i didn't actually particularly like it so not a bad thing losing out on that so oh android 4.4.4 didn't expect that. I thought they would have at least gone with Android 5.1. So interesting there. Using now a quite a dated version of Android. And also I forgot to mention before there is a front facing camera, but it's almost useless because it's only a VGA camera. So the resolution is 0.3 megapixels. I'm sure that's going to take an absolutely hopeless image and it won't actually probably even be that good for video probably. But you do have to remember that this is a bottom entry level budget tablet at the price range of around about 80 US. You can't really expect too much. So what we're getting at least a better screen than definitely those 1280 by 800 ones that you normally see. Speaking of the screen here, I do have it set to maximum brightness. And it looks okay. I mean, I have a bit of lighting on at the moment. Uh, it's supposed to get up to about 350 nits of brightness. And there is definitely still a gap. This is not a fully laminated display. Their promotional material made it look like it could be, but I, I knew that at, at this price range there's no way you're going to have a fully laminated display there. The gap I would estimate to be probably around two and a half, two millimeters. Doesn't seem to be too distracting like it can be on some tablets. And there's a pre-applied screen protector there. So before I head over into Windows, Let's have a quick look on the free available storage we have. So not a lot. You can see there we've only got 5.5, 5.8, sorry, gigabytes there free. So if you install some of those really big new titles, games, etc., that is just going to be eaten up straight away. And I don't really like to see dual boot. I haven't for some time. Even as soon as they came out, it's got to be on a 64 minimum, I think, EMC drive and 32. Wow, we're pushing it here when it comes to space. So to move over into Windows, I think we can launch here. Uh, no, we can't actually. Normally there's a toggle right there that we can just flip over, but we have to run the icon here, uh, the application, sorry, boot to Windows comes up. Do we wish to boot over to Windows? Yes. Okay, let's check out the weight of it. So 323 grams and the Thickness of it as well. It's definitely not the thinnest device. So it comes in at uh, 9.16 millimeters. Okay, so here we are in Windows. I can clearly see that it is Windows 10. We'll have a look and see if it is activated or not. So Windows 10 Home. Probably need to connect up to the internet to activate that. Oh, it is actually already activated. All right, that's okay. So the device manager. See what we have on board with the network adapter. That's the Realtek RTL 8723BS, which is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless N chipset. Very common from Realtek. It's either this one or the Broadcom that they use in these tablets, especially at this price range. And the disk drive, we have a generic B-Win. Uh, oh dear. <laughs> Those are normally, uh, some of them aren't too bad, okay. But some of them do have very slow write rates. I will be testing that out in a later video. I'll do a benchmark of that. So I'll run Crystal Disk Mark 5 just to check out the uh, sequential reads and writes and the random 4K speeds on that one. But from experience, I know that B-Win's are not particularly good. They are, I think, a cheaper component. And of course, in this price range of about 80 US, they are going to be using some cheaper parts there. Okay, so the screen, I'll have a look at this is on Windows, brightness up to 100% there. That seems reasonably right, bright there. Uh, just having a look at that, I'd say that's probably going to be the claimed 350 or at least over 300. Uh, lots of brightness there and, and the viewing angles doesn't seem too bad I mean most of the other tablets we have of course have the uh, 10 16 by 10 ratio 
this one being 4 by 3 we don't see too many of them now of course there was the tech last x89 they did have with a retina screen in it for some reason now they've, they've priced this one a little different the retina screen is probably a, a definitely a more expensive screen to use so they've found this cheaper substitute I do find it very curious the fact that they have gone with the bay trail and not a cherry trail now down here we have a, a little icon there that will be to switch over back into Android if, Android if we wanted to go through to with that so just simply touching that now is going to ask us if we want to boot over to Android yes or no and available free space too is another thing I do need to check out so 7.82 gigabytes there free is not a lot to play around with especially with Windows updates that will probably eat into at least another gigabyte or two very quickly there alright so this is just the first unboxing and the initial hands-on and first look at the Ticklast X89 Kindo so far the I'm a little disappointed with the bezels but I guess that's because of the the media press release images that they put out there they tend to falsify the bezel dimensions a little bit they make them look a little small than they really are and the build of it I mean okay it's plastic I did expect this really I mean for the price range you're not going to get a premium unibody definitely have to be a little bit more expensive for that and, and overall I mean the, it doesn't seem to have any flex of it it does seem quite sturdy fit and finish is good I can't see any shoddy workmanship or glue coming out of it or rough edges or anything like that it does seem to be quite clean so I can't I guess I can't complain again for that price range what you are getting there so I will have some more up-and-coming videos on this particular model hopefully soon if you are interested in seeing more on this one do keep an eye on the playlist there that's where I will upload them once I work my way through that so I will benchmark out uh, Android and Windows as well and probably a little bit of gaming too just to see how well it performs although I have I have covered Android gaming on these tablets now very thoroughly and I, I get a good idea they can play some of your latest games but on low resolutions and settings there thank you for watching this video and hopefully see you back in the channel soon